but in the battle for survival of William, Western civilization and Christian civilization is going to be reality and not illusion or delusion that's going to determine what the future will bring. And I have to remind you the views expressed here are not necessarily those of the owner's management, staff, sponsors, or supporters of the station you're listening to. They're my views, and for the next hour, they're going to be the views of William H. Kennedy, who is a prolific writer. He certainly has written a, a number of books, and we've had him on many, many times. His book on satanic crimes is vitally important. We have a four-tape set on satanic crimes. And, of course, if you go to William's website, you'll be able to access all sorts of occult and satanic literature. It's not imaginary. There really are people out there who worship Lucifer, and some of them are working at the highest levels of our government today. Well, William H. Kennedy, thanks very much for being with us this evening. Oh, it's great to be back on Radio Liberty, Dr. Stan. Uh, it's <clears throat> really my core audience that's out there, and it's uh, because of... Radio Liberty, I got my own series on the Discovery Channel called Killer Kids, and uh, people can watch the uh, episode at williamhkennedy.com for free. Um, th that was a very successful uh, series that's going to be continued. We're going to do some uh, another series of it uh, in early 2013. And we're going to do five more episodes, and we're going to focus more on uh, occult crimes. The uh, the TV show did very, very well in the Asian market. So well, they, how, uh, about the, how about the American market? Would they show it here? Well, yeah, originally <clears throat> it was on the Discovery Channel in Canada. And they produced it through... Um, <clears throat> Blue Planet Productions, Christian Page was the name of the fellow who directed the series. And they showed it on the Discovery Channel Canada, but then when they took it down to the United States, they put it on the Biography Channel, which is, you know, a much lower rated sort of... Um, well, of course, Mr. William, I'm firmly convinced that the people who control the media in the United States, and ladies and gentlemen, are, there is a central control over the media, and they don't want the American people to understand the spiritual battle that we're involved in, the satanic and Luciferian forces that are out there, the fact that there is an organized effort to poison the American people with all sorts of foods that are not allowed in other countries and widely circulated here in America. But the last thing they want America American people to understand as we are under attack not only physically but psychologically but most of all spiritually and there is a conscious effort to destroy America and if the people don't wake up to what's going on why the the dream that was America will I fear soon become a nightmare well go ahead anyway Chris uh, uh, but it did at least get on to uh, one of the one of the channels down here even though it was one that did not have a large listener audience not not very big at all, but um, then they showed it on the Discovery Channel Asia uh, out of India, and it did very, very well in the Asian market, so they renewed us for five more um, episodes. I can't get into the details too much now because we're just working, researching and working on, you know, the Oh, I'm so glad you're getting the information out. Of course, in other countries, they really understand these spiritual issues much more than we do here in America, because, of course, they're not discussed in our schools, certainly. And mention even of God is taken out of our schools. And believe me, when you take God and prayer and the Ten Commandments and moral teachings out of our schools, and when you teach them evolution and you indoctrinate them in all sorts of globalist ideas, they never have any idea about the two demonic forces, which are, of course, influencing everything going on in the world today, including, of course, the coming war with the Muslim world, which is only a matter of time before more and more people are being millions, perhaps, killed. William, go right ahead. Well, Dr. Stan, as I said, people can go to williamhkennedy.com and they can watch the episode of Killer Kids that I'm in, and uh, this features um, the you know the murder of Elise uh, Paler in California by a satanic cult back in the um, <clears throat> 1980s, and it deals with the Ricky uh, Casso case, the Say You Love Satan murderer, 
and um, uh, a couple of other really fascinating true life stories of Satanists who committed murders. And all, what this series is about is ones who were uh, 17 and under. Well, most people don't understand that the Charles Manson murders were simply satanic murders. They were, and certainly the uh, Son of Sam murders tied into certainly a satanic group. But th this has been totally suppressed here in America, uh, even though the people, at least uh, the, the Son of Sam, David Berkowitz, I think was his name, the Son of Sam murderers, eventually came forward and told the whole story totally suppressed in America, so there's not probably one person in a thousand that knows the truth about the Son of Sam murders. Oh yeah, Maury Terry was the last person to do any significant research um, on that subject. He, I believe he's semi-retired now, but uh, he really bought out the, the uh, how the Son of Sam murders were actually a group killing and a satanic sacrifice for a spin-off group of a church <clears throat> of the church the process church of the last judgment which was um a pretty influential satanic cult back <clears throat> excuse me back in the 1960s and um it he, this this church had ties to both the Manson family and to David Berkowitz, but uh, Maury Terry brought this out, and they even did a couple of uh, TV specials like Unsolved Mysteries and that. But then that just that just pretty much died out until my book uh, Satanic Crime came out, and I kind of revived the story to a, a popular audience. And that's a really good deal. People should look at uh, go to RadioLiberty.com. The combination Satanic Crime and for um, recordings of shows I did, which the combination of the two is probably the best general introduction to Satanism that's on the market out there. I guarantee that there's nothing more comprehensive than uh, go to Radio Liberty. Hold that, thought. Uh, Hold that thought. We'll be back in just a moment here. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and what he was simply talking uh, about, so the satanic crimes, he's actually uh, well, was uh, contacted by Discovery Channel, but not the Discovery Channel in America, the Discovery Channel in Canada, and they did a, a series of, of programs uh, this, this last year, and there's going to be another one next year. Of course, they're very, very popular in in Asia, they put them on here uh, on channels where they know nobody's going to watch them. But of course, they they so they they go into the satanic crimes. So there really are satanic crimes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the 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 Manson murders. No, they're not going to tell you. They were related to a group called the Process Church of the Latter Day Judgment. They were a satanic group, and so was the Son of Sam Killers. David Berkowitz, uh, who was the Son of Sam Killer, eventually admitted this was all the Process Church of the Latter-day Judgment, totally suppressed by the media here in America, but as William was just saying, uh, certainly if you want to know about the satanic crimes in America, and certainly in Europe, why well, you want to get his book, Satanic Crimes, and we have a four-tape a four tape set called Satanic Crimes, and they're, they're available by calling 1-800-544-8927. If you really want to understand what's going on, but everything is done by the controlled media to keep you from understanding the true nature of the spiritual battle we're engaged in today. Well, well, William, go ahead now. What were we going to cover tonight? Well, Dr. Stan, uh, I, I consider myself a sort of a cult historian, and my academic degrees are actually in religious studies and philosophy, but I focused uh, primarily on the modern Satanism movement. I've written two books, uh, Lucifer's Lodge, Satanic Ritual Abuse in the Catholic Church, and uh, satanic crime, a threat in the new millennium. And just to be comprehensive, now those two books were about authentic, true cases of Satanists who, you know, you know, sexually abused children and uh, and even had organi an organization built around them called NAMBLA, the North American Man Boy Love Association. There's all kinds of occult ties in uh, that organization. Um, it's very sick, 
that uh, these things really did happen. But what I'm looking at now is <clears throat> one thing, the biggest response I get when I do shows like yours or uh, other shows is I'll get a lot of emails asking me about the satanic panic of the 1980s. And unfortunately, there were people sent to prison for satanic ritual abuse who were completely innocent. And I'm just looking at these cases to give my audience as full a picture of the modern Satanism movement that I can. I want them to understand all the dimensions of it. it the more I study it, the more complicated it becomes. And I just try and simplify it so people can just get an overview and at least start thinking about uh, these things that are around them that they're kind of probably not noticing about, um, you know, you'll have, you'll have movie rental machines in supermarkets that have all occult covers on them. You know, you have this fascination with the Twilight Vampire movie thing. I saw a thing, uh, they had a Twilight Christmas um, paper plates and the vampire had a Santa Claus hat on. Very bizarre. And that's a big part of what I, I really like uh, people to to start thinking about how occult and satanic forces, how, how much it is affecting them through the popular media. They just they just might not notice it. And when you become more aware of it, you you know, you it liberates you from it, but it's it's kind of scary too because you see what a really good job They've done a kind of candy coating this uh, Satanism in the popular media. Well, you know, sort of the Harry Potter, that, that Harry Potter whole concept of the occult and the witches. And, I mean, this is the most one of the most popular series of books we've ever had. I think the author made a couple of billion dollars out of it. They made a whole series of movies out of it. They indoctrinated our children in this whole supernatural element. And behind that, I believe, was this intentional effort to make a Satanism and the occult certainly, well, which is, uh, it was all just a fascinating story without understanding that what they're doing is changing the attitude of our people, changing the attitude of these children so that they will never really be able to embrace Christianity as it was traditionally taught. This is a war against Christianity and of course it is being waged by the people who control the media and of course the enemy is the Christian heritage of this country. Go right ahead. Well, that's right, Dr. Stan, <clears throat> and I just want people to become aware. If they go to WilliamHKennedy.com, there's tons and tons of free information. I have a Satanic Crime multimedia page. They can watch all sorts of documentaries and news stories on uh, Satanic killers for free. This is mostly links to YouTube and stuff like that, which I maintain. So... I just want to educate the general public in the modern Satanism movement as extensively as possible. And as part of just being, you know, to give people as precise and up-to-date look at all the aspects of Satanic crime, <clears throat> I do look at some cases I'm working on now. I'm going to write an article. I haven't finished it yet. How people were wrongly sent to prison uh, for satanic ritual abuse in the 1980s, and this is called the Satanic Panic. That's what a label they threw on it. And what happened is the big problem I discovered when I looked at the Satanic Panic cases was that, quite frighteningly, the police obtained false confessions from uh, several people who were naive enough to fall into their kind of trap. And <clears throat> it's quite frightening how the police, now even when they bring you in to question you and read you your rights, they use very refined forms of mind control and brainwashing. They usually have a body language expert watching you while you're sitting there speaking to see if you're giving any indication that you're lying. You know, 
Body language accounts for about 90% of human communication, even more than words. So there, in these cases, uh, in the, the one I'm looking at, the West Memphis 3, is uh, one of the, the stranger cases in that um, in the 1990s, they found some murdered children in West Memphis, Arkansas, and the police immediately tracked down uh, three local kids who were who in the heavy metal and Satanism. They were all under 18, and they brought them in for questioning because this, they just got a hunch this might be a ritual murder because the, the bodies were found uh, bound with these, like, I believe there were three seven-year-old kids who got their throats slit. And so <clears throat> they brought these kids in. Now, one of these three uh 17-year-olds had an IQ of 60, which gives him the mind of about a 7- or 8-year-old person. He was 17 biologically, but his mind was the mind of, say, an 8-year-old kid, to put it on the, the higher end. And what they did <clears throat> is they tricked him into waiving his right to a lawyer they said, like, you know, if you answer these questions, we can get you a lawyer, but that will take four or five hours. But if you just answer a few simple questions, we can get you out of here quicker. So the, this poor guy said, okay, that I don't want a lawyer then. And what they proceeded to do over the next couple of hours is they convinced him to make a confession that he witnessed the murder of these children but they did it in a very leading way. And remember, this is the mind of an 8-year-old, not of a 17-year-old. And he, he falsely confessed that the three of them murdered these kids. Uh, While well, they were sent to prison um, for, I believe it was 17 years until they were finally exonerated. And uh, just looking at this case, it opened up, like I say, this very strange world of police questioning and interrogation and what I discovered are even our local police and sheriffs when they bring you or I in for questioning uh, they have a whole repertoire of tricks and semi-deceptive tactics to get people to falsely confess to crimes and sometimes people confess to crimes they did commit, but they also are very effective at pressuring people into making false confessions. They wear the people down. Something snaps in people, and it's kind of like the Stockholm Syndrome. They just identify with the aggressor, the police, and at one juncture they feel like they're going to get sent to prison no matter what, and what they will say to these people is like, look, we're, we know you did this. We're going to tell the judge you did this. If you sign a confession, you know, we can get a lot of time. We'll lower the, the charge to manslaughter, and you'll only do like 10 or 12 years. But if you don't, you could be looking at life. So sometimes people are just coerced a into... Uh, signing false confessions and in the 1980s it did happen uh, a, a few places now another big case which happened oh uh, we at the break well we will be here in just a moment go right ahead I'll tell you when to stop oh, okay sure uh, well they um, uh, the Amaral family at the Fells Acre uh, daycare center for children were accused. What happened is one kid had wet his pants and the uh, son took the emerald, changed his underwear. Hold that thought, hold that thought. William, go right ahead. Well, as I was saying, Tookie Emerald, the Emerald family uh, in the 80s ran a daycare center called the Fells Acre in Malden, Massachusetts, and they, um, uh, one of the kids wet his pants one day and took the emerald, he was a boy, took him upstairs and changed his underwear and just wiped him down with a, a 
a cloth, I believe, which is the common procedure, you know, a disinfectant. And the kid told his parents, and the parents thought that, you know, wrongly thought that Tuggy Emerald had molested this kid, and the police were brought in. And uh, what happened in this instance is what the, the, the social workers and the police actually coached the kids into making false accusations against the Emerald family. And they would do so through rewards and sort of punishments. They'd act disappointed if the people, the children, didn't uh, start speaking in a sexual manner. And they manipulated these kids. Uh, John Stossel did an excellent ex of this case that people can see at WilliamHKennedy.com and on the ritual abuse page. And just how this family, uh, these kids started making outrageous confessions like, like the, uh, and accusations like there was a magic tree that they were tied to and a robot that looked like RTD2 used to come out and sexually abuse them. I mean, really bizarre things that it, it, it just, it was so outlandish. It couldn't be true, and three members of the Emerald family were wrongly sent to prison for many years. They're all out now, and I was, I always thought they were innocent. You know, this was right near where I live. I was actually born in Malden, Massachusetts, so I have a connection to it. Um, it's, it, it's really, it was a tragic thing because Tookie Emerald could have been released many years he stayed in prison rather than sign a document saying he was guilty if he signed a document saying he was guilty they would have released him from prison and he refused to sign it and remained in jail he's free now but i think it was there again near 20 years he was in prison for a crime he didn't commit because the authorities the police and the psychologists and the social workers actually trick the kids into making false accusations against um, Tookie Amaral and the Amaral family. And when you see the actual expose that John Stossel did, um, it's quite frightening in that, you know, these people were just all of a sudden, like the Salem witch trials, they were automatically considered guilty. Now, um, these cases, you know, these horrible injustices were labeled uh, satanic panic. And what happened is a, a lot of uh, mainstream liberal newspapers started to claim that this was a lot of media hype that caused this thing. They blamed people like Geraldo Rivera, who reported on Satanism, and they eventually made Geraldo Rivera thought. apologize. Hold the, thought. Hold the thought there, please. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and certainly William H. Kennedy has written extensively and put together a number of videos about satanic crimes, but he also has put together a treatise on people being falsely accused of satanic crimes. It doesn't happen very often, but it does sometimes happen. And certainly using a very aggressive questioning techniques, the police have gotten people uh, to actually can, uh, admit or to uh, sign confessions for crimes they didn't commit. And, of course, using the media, telling them they're going to spend the rest of their life in prison, but if they'll just sign a confession, they'll be out in a few years. Why, of course, they've got people to sign confessions, and then sometimes, after agreeing that they'll be out in a few years for a crime they didn't commit, why, of course, then they're kept in for long periods of time. We're talking about sometimes, and William was just talking about one case, uh, certainly uh, from Massachusetts, where this one man was in prison for 20 years, uh, accused of molesting children in a daycare center when he was totally innocent. How did they ever prove that they were actually innocent with him? Did, uh, or did somebody come forward and admit it or what? Um, well, what they did is they looked at the films of the social workers and psychologists who were basically the witch hunters. And if you, you really have to see it at WilliamHKennedy.com, go to the 
uh, ritual abuse page, and you can see the John Stossel case on the Fells Acre um, case. And the, the Fells Acre case, when you actually see how these social workers used leading questions to the youngest children possible, you know, three- and four-year-olds who don't have the same sense of reality that an older kid might. You know, little kids make up stories all the time, and they just basically told these children and coached them and led them into making, uh, you know, all sorts of bizarre accusations, like being tied up and whipped on a tree, yet there were no... You know, there were no marks of torture on any of these kids. They claimed to, you know, every kind of bizarre sexual act you can imagine, they were led into making accusations. But the the physicians who examined the kids, when you look at their reports, what they said happened could not have happened just because there was no, they would have left the biological traces, you know, scars from being whipped and, other things I'd rather you know not discuss, but a lot of a lot of the physical results of uh, the rape of children were undertaken, and these kids showed no physical signs of being abused in the way that these false accusations had said. You know, they said they were stabbed, and you know there were no scars. So eventually, over time. Uh, all three members of the Emerald family uh, went to jail. Uh, his sister and mother also went to prison for many years under these bizarre false claims. And uh, eventually the two women were let out, but Tookie hung in there. And finally they let him out in a way which there was some honor left, but... Bizarrely enough, I believe he is still on the sexual predator, you know, watch list. So, I mean, they ruined this poor man's life. Now, they, they did make some sort of financial settlement with him, which is a good thing because, you know, he, you know, he could never get a job or, or work or have any kind of a normal life. He has to live kind of incognito. Because there's a lot of people out there, you know, who are half educated who might not, you know, might recognize him and do something, you know, mix him up for a, a, an authentic child molester. So there's really no career he could have. So, I mean, they ruined the Emerald family's life. The mother died a few years ago, and um, it was a complete witch hunt. The stuff they were talking about, you know, People dressed up like wizards and RT, R2-D2 do robots coming out and things that, you know, never could happen in a million years. But then again, you know, you can't blame the media for reporting on these things. You can't blame Oprah Winfrey or Sean Hannity or um, Geraldo Rivera, who, by the way, launched their careers into, you know, highly successful careers by covering uh, satanic crimes, Oprah Winfrey as well. People don't realize Sean Hannity, they both had uh, Malachi Martin on their show very early on. So uh, they did a lot of occult journalism, and they were blamed for these people wrongly going to prison. Well, there's been a lot of things. You have to be so careful. I know certainly there was a, about the same period of time there's something called the false memory syndrome. And of course, these were people actually, many of whom actually had been sexually molested, but they were accusing of having false uh, the false memories. And uh, this whole false memory syndrome association was organized by, of all people, the Central Intelligence Agency. While a storm cloud gathers Well, William, you go right ahead. Well, Dr. Stan, as I was saying, um, the big problem with these satanic panic cases of the 1980s was not the media coverage. It's the police and um, authorities like social workers, psychologists, uh, psychiatrists, 
who are on the state payroll, and what they were actually doing was tricking these children in the Fells Acres case to make false accusations against uh, the Amaral family. Uh, Tookie Amaral, his mother and sister, I believe, went to uh, uh, prison under, for false charges of satanic ritual abuse that did not happen. And it, we have to remember that the problem is not with the media, like Geraldo Rivera apologized because people had gone to prison. Actually, Geraldo Rivera's coverage of Satanism was very balanced and good. I used to love his specials back in the 1980s. They were fantastic. And he did give both sides of the story and let you know people speak for themselves. Like uh, he had Ted Gunderson on, the former FBI man, and he had Michael Aquino, the head of the, the, the Temple of Set, which is a Church of Satan spinoff. So he, ha he actually did a very good job, but he was forced to apologize and take the blame for these satanic panic cases when, in the long run, the big problem is not with the media reporting it. It's with, as I said, the police tricking people into making false confessions. And one thing I just want to uh, tell everybody out there, uh, anyone can get arrested at any time. The police can take you, and, you know, if you stand still for more than 30 seconds, they can arrest you for vagrancy. There's so many laws on the books that you're automatically breaking the law. So they can take you in. And a big problem with the, these uh, cases like the West Memphis Three is the boys didn't have a lawyer present with them. Now, if you get arrested, you are entitled to a state-provided lawyer. Um, a lot of people, you know, don't like, you know, it, it's a, if they can't afford a lawyer themselves, they will get a state one. But I'll tell you, state-appointed lawyers, I know for a fact, get people acquitted every day in courts. So you're still better off if you get arrested for a crime when Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We'll be right back in. Of course, our guest is William H. Kennedy, and William's point is it's on occasion why the police will uh, certainly uh, abuse their ability to uh, question people. They'll try to get you to accept questioning without a lawyer, and William's point is if you are called in on anything legal, be sure you have a lawyer there with you because sometimes certainly the police wanting to get an education, uh, wanting to get a conviction, and I'm sure certainly well motivated by trying to keep law and order in this community, but sometimes they will be aggressive, sometimes they are experts, and they are experts on getting people to confess, and sometimes they even will get people to confess who've done nothing. Now, this is not a condemnation of the police. William only has a couple of cases of this sort where people have been oh, talked into confessing about satanic crimes they did not commit. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there really are satanic crimes out there. And the great tragedy is most of the satanic crimes are never, never, never indicted or investigated or followed through. And we have certainly pedophiles, satanic pedophile rings. This is what John DeCamp talks about. And if you haven't read his book on the Franklin cover-up, it's very important. And we have a series of interviews with, with John DeCamp. And we have interviews with the gentleman who wrote the Franklin uh, uh, scandal. It's the same basic story about a pedophile ring that began at Boys Town in Kansas and went right up to the highest levels of people in Nebraska and extended into the White House itself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not imaginary. It's very real. A story which most people have never heard of. But certainly before we go on, William, I want you to tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you, get your website, get your information, and if you're out there and you have a question for William, our telephone number is one 888 liberty one triple eight two four liberty or four six four eight two nine five. But William is certainly one of the experts on satanic crimes in America today. Go right ahead, William. How can people get to your website and get further information on this network of satanic organizations all across America, which are very real, extend into the highest levels of government, and yet most people have never heard of them. 
Uh, well, sure. It's quite simple. Go to WilliamHKennedy.com. WilliamHKennedy.com. Don't forget the H. And uh, that will bring you to my homepage where I have compiled, you know, hundreds of thousands of hours of documentary films primarily on uh, a variety of satanic cases. And I have the full range of the contemporary Satanism movement. You know, I have an Alistair uh, Crowley page, which uh, sometimes his name is pronounced Crowley, Alistair Crowley. But he, he was part of, of, of British intelligence. Yes, but he was an advisor to uh, uh, MI6, which was the counter-espionage division of the um, British government. And, um, you know, he had uh, ties during the war a few times. You know, they talked to him about, um, you know, why Rudolf Hess came, uh, surrendered in England because of some astrological forecast. So they knew the Nazis were heavily into the occult. So they recruited Crowley, who was an occultist and a Satanist, to try and interpret uh, what the Germans might do next via things like astrology and, um, you know, Nostradamus and all of these prophetic things what the Nazis uh, knew about. And um, he was, you know, he was linked in there for uh, uh, the duration of the war. He was consulted uh, several times by the, uh, you know, some very high-level administrators in the Churchill government. So um, he he did he did get his word to the very top when it came to you know the occult aspects of uh, Nazism, which is uh, uh, you know fascinating. I even have a whole section at WilliamHKennedy.com where people can uh, look at uh, the Nazis and the occult, the uh, National Socialist Movement um, was a neo pagan organization which sought to eventually overthrow Christianity and install a Luciferian a Fuhrer system. Uh, Hitler uh, and Himmler, uh, Hitler's assistant, uh, Himmler, head of the SS, was fascinated with the occult and what he wanted to eventually revive, his secret name for the um, the governing council of the SS was uh, Lucifer's courtiers. So secretly, the, hot, the Nazis were worshiping Satan. Now, uh, Hermann Goering, at his estate, his country estate, had a giant tapestry of Lucifer in, as a centerpiece in his house, where he took people, you know, uh, dignitaries and, and such. So. You know he, you know he let them know where he was coming from. So uh, it's quite amazing. National Socialism was a a satanic neo pagan cult. Uh, as I say, they after the war they discovered amongst the SS papers uh, plans to overthrow the uh, papacy and the Protestant Church and convert the people back to a form of pre-Christian kind of Norse religion combined with Satanism. Very, very strange. And the German people, sadly, you know, loved this. They saw this as a consolidation of their past. And, you know, the Nazis were also very scientifically oriented and futuristic. So it was a strange mix uh, of occult, satanic, and even scientific futurism that made up the Third Reich, which is, it, it's quite amazing. The more you look at politics, you, the more you see that uh, politicians are heavily, heavily influenced by astrologers and uh, various clairvoyants. And, uh, you know, right, you know, Ronald Reagan had an astrologer. Uh, she, he went to see Gene Dixon. Um, Harry Truman went to Kenny Kingston, who was a celebrity psychic back in 
the um, he's still around. He's a friend of mine. I shouldn't say back. He's still very active. Kenny Kingston, and he consulted with Truman. He did a reading for Truman. Well, weren't, weren't both Roosevelt and uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, Franklin and Eleanor, both involved in astrology? Oh, heavily. Um, they um, consulted with Gene Dixon, who was a local astrologer in um, Washington, D.C., and... Roosevelt always had a very, he was a, a 32nd degree Mason. He always had a very mystical underpinning to, you know, his definitions of destiny and infamy. And, you know, he really used the, the English language, but he used it in an almost mythological way. So it's uh, quite amazing. He, um,. He, Gene Dixon visited him uh, several times. Well, of course, uh, basically, of course, uh, so, uh, Hillary Clinton was deeply involved in astrology and the occult. We, we never talk about this sort of thing. Both George Bush and uh, uh, his father, George Herbert Walker Bush, were members of the, uh, the uh, Skull and Bone Society, which is a Luciferian organization, and in the indoctrination, uh, why, of course, they bow before an edifice of, uh, uh, of Lucifer. And uh, certainly George Herbert Walker Bush was into the Bohemian Grove, which has strong occult foundations. Uh, he was also a member of the CFR, the Bilderbergers, and Trilateral Commission, Trilateral Commission. Uh, their logo certainly uh, is a, a, a circle with three curved arrows in it. And, of course, if you look very carefully, you can almost imagine that there are three sixes on the inside. You can see the sixes very clearly, all joined together by an upside-down broken cross, an ancient uh, occultist uh, emblem. That is the logo, the current logo of the Trilateral Commission. And, of course, they control our government, certainly every president and or vice president. And very often, both the president and or vice president between 1977 and the year 2008 came from the small membership roles of the North American chapter of the Trilateral Commission that includes both people from Canada and uh, Mexico and has never exceeded 87 people. But, of course, we find, if you want to get the background of why they took God and prayer out of our schools, why it was because the Masons control the Supreme Court. And certainly there is an element within Masonry that are frankly Luciferian, according to Manley P. Hall, who was a 33rd degree Mason, the most important and significant Mason of all modern time. And Manley P. Hall certainly points out certainly that uh, there is this inner core of Masonry that is deeply involved in the occult. Well, the Masons control the Supreme Court. And majorities of 5 to 4 to 8 to 1, constantly from 1974. Uh, 1941 to 1971, and it was the Masons who took God in prayer out of our schools, and the legacy then took the Ten Commandments out shortly thereafter. But it was based upon Mason and the occult influence in the United States Supreme Court that they took God in prayer out of our schools and set us up for where we are today, a nation without a moral foundation, uh, where, of course, homosexuality is taught in kindergarten, all across America is being perfectly normal. And we are never to tell our young girls uh, that they should not be involved in sexual activity. In fact, uh, the government recently appropriated $150,000 $150,000 to teach 14 and 15 year old girls how to negotiate the use of condoms. This is something, you can check this out on the internet, happened within the last two weeks. How to negotiate the use of condoms, 14, 15 year old American girls, and we wonder why we're in problems today. Go right ahead, William. Well, yeah, Dr. Stan, I mean, a lot of these things really pan out like that, and the more I look at our politicians, it's just kept on the back burner of uh, reporting. Um, the Clintons were heavily influenced by Gene Houston, who um, came to the White House and did a kind of psychic reading for Hillary Clinton, where I believe she personified Eleanor Roosevelt or channeled Eleanor Roosevelt or something to do similar to the Silva mind control method where you imagine someone from history and have a conversation with them. This is obviously, you know, opening yourself up to demonic forces. 
So Hillary did this with Eleanor Roosevelt, but this went unreported in the popular press, and Gene Houston was a, a major advisor to the Clintons for their whole eight years. You never heard her name. Well, let me just mention Joan Quigley. I'm sure you're acquainted with Joan Quigley. All oh, our, sure. All our listeners should be. She was, of course, Nancy Reagan's astrologer. She wrote a book called What Did Joan Say? Uh, because, of course, every time Nancy and she would go to see Joan Quigley on a weekly basis to get advice how to run the White House of the United States. And when, when Nancy got back to the White House, Ron would say, What Did Joan Say? You can get the book. It's available on Amazon. What did Joan say by Joan Quigley, who is an astrologer who ran the Reagan administration? Now, most people would say, oh, well, we don't want to talk about that. We love Ronald Reagan. I love Ronald Reagan. He was the greatest actor of all time. He said everything I believe, and he said everything right. <laughs> and yet, of course, look and see what happened. He pursued this whole internationalist agenda. Uh, he, he criticized Jimmy Carter because Jimmy Carter ran up a two hundred billion dollar debt in the four years he was in the White House, bringing the total national debt to one trillion dollars in 1980. And then Ronald Reagan became president. And every year he was in office, he increased the national debt. $200 billion. Just took Jimmy Carter four years, took Ronald Reagan one year. When Ronald Reagan left the White House, the national debt was $2.7 or $2.8 trillion. Ronald Reagan said everything we wanted to hear. But look and see what he did as he expanded our military. And certainly as he ran up a massive, massive debt and massively increased the size of government. Go right ahead, William. Well, that's true, Dr. Stan. And you know, whenever the government declares a war on something, it's usually it's a paradoxical situation, but usually the uh, opposite happens. Like when they declared a war on drugs, when they formed the uh, DEA, Richard Nixon, in the early 70s, you know, it was um, quite a, a bizarre thing when you think about it. But... Uh, it actually failed right when they, they formed that, then crack cocaine started to hit uh, North America, the cocaine and crack cocaine uh, epidemic, which we're still suffering from. Now it's more into methamphetamine, I'm told. But um, this was all, all really, uh, it's like when the government declared a war on it, it's like the opposite happened. The other side wins, or when they declared a war on poverty, well, there's more people uh, living below the poverty level in the United States now. It's quite, it's quite stunning. Uh, we're going to have all these baby boomers retiring over the next 10 years, and uh, Social Security won't be solvent enough to really cover them all, and a lot of these pensions these people have will really be rendered worthless one way or another. We have so. 79 million baby boomers retiring over the next 18 years. 79 million. They'll be eligible for Social Security. They'll be eligible for uh, Medicare. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no way we can possibly do that in another 20 years. All the money the government can get in will be going to pay for Social Security and Medicare. There just won't be anything at all for anything else. And before long, we'll be paying more for the interest on the national debt. And there won't even be money for Social Security and Medicare. They know where we're heading. How do we know? Well, we know that Cloward and Piven, you can look this up, Cloward and Piven, writing in the Nation magazine in 1966, go to the Internet, look it up. Uh, there were two communists. They said, look, we can destroy America. We can destroy America simply by promising all these wonderful social programs and we'll eventually bankrupt America. And out of the chaos that comes, we can declare our dictatorship. That was the plan uh, declared in 1966 by Cloward and Piven. has been carried out by the elite of America ever since then. They know what they're doing, but we're talking about certainly going over the cliff by cutting $600 billion. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we've run up almost $6 trillion in deficit over the last five years, uh, last four years, and nobody is talking about that. President Barack Obama wants to, uh, I think, cut $1.6 trillion from the budget in the next uh, 10 years. 
we've run a $1.2 trillion deficit every year. What good is it going to cut $1.6 trillion over 10 years? But nobody talks about that. People don't understand that they really do intend to destroy our nation. But behind this are the powerful spiritual forces that hate America because we're a Christian nation. Our guest this evening has been William H. Kennedy. And we're going to be back. William, go right ahead. What are your parting thoughts for our listeners? Well, Dr. Stan, uh, just visit WilliamHKennedy.com. Uh, look at this really fascinating world of Satanism and the occult. Hold that thought. Do you we'll like right it or there. not is all around you. William, we've got three minutes to wrap up the program. Oh, very good, Dr. Stan. There again, go to WilliamHKennedy.com. Uh, people can watch my Killer Kids um, Occult Killing a documentary for free. It's a very high production Discovery Channel um, series that I did, and people can watch the episode I'm in if they're curious what I look like. I often get asked what I look like. People can see what I look like in this film probably for the first time because I've kind of tried to keep my face off the Internet, to be honest, with the kind of work I do. Um, so, uh, so if people go there, there's tons of free information, absolutely free, uh, thousands of hours of documentaries on, uh... William, William, what about the Wenatchee, Washington's it was satanic, supposedly satanic, or a crime situation? Do you know anything about that? The what? Wenatchee, Washington, it was a, it was a, supposedly there was this whole uh, group of people who were involved in, uh, in exploitation and uh, sexual molestation. Oh, I think it was a whole church up there in Washington, the state of Washington. Oh, I heard something about that. I'm not too familiar with that case. Uh, I, I, I just read a few articles on it. Um, the, there's uh, several big cases out now. Um, which are quite fascinating, which I, I will be covering. But uh, for now, I'm just, you know, trying to compile in this series, which is going to continue Killer Kids, just to get uh, a grasp on children who've committed murders in occult rituals. And it's very rare. It's not a common thing. But, I mean, there's enough of it that it, it's certainly of concern, and there's enough of it that uh, it's not ending. It seems to be increasing. So uh, people should go to WilliamHKennedy.com. You, you know, it's self-paced learning. Just watch one or two documentaries. You know, I, I've organized it in a real clear fashion. So you can start, if you're a novice, you can just start from the beginning, or if you know a, a lot about the occult, which a lot of my readers do, you can go to, straight to the more advanced material. So, uh, you know, I also have free... Uh, online ebooks and articles and audios, uh, you know, all those political groups, the Bohemian Grove, Bilderberg Group, uh, Yale Skull and Bone Society, the Freemasons, tons and tons of free information which definitively prove that these organizations are ultimately Luciferian and exert far more control over our government and our economy. We're out of time. Hold that thought just a moment here. Sure. Well, this is Dr. Stan. Our guest this evening has been William H. Kennedy, and uh, he suggests, and I certainly second that, you go to WilliamHKennedy.com. WilliamHKennedy.com. Uh, this will give you a great deal of information about the vast a network of satanic crimes and satanic organizations in America today. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of various references. Would that be a fair statement, William? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's. Um, I have compelling and indisputable proof at WilliamHKennedy.com that there is a satanic conspiracy out there that operates on many levels in our society. We're going to let you go. We're out of time. God Very bless good. God Thanks bless you, Dr. Stan. Bye-bye. Okay, that's William H. Kennedy and certainly We carry his book, Satanic Crimes. We have a four-tape or CD set on satanic crimes, and two of those hours are with my interviews with William Kennedy. You must understand this is not imaginary. It's really very, very real. 
and suddenly oh, this goes right into the White House itself. Uh, we don't carry, I don't think we still have the book by Joan Quigley. We used to carry it. What did Joan say? And this was Nancy Reagan's astrologer, and suddenly uh, Nancy went to see her every week to get uh, information uh, on how to run the Reagan administration. If that is true, why would you never hear about it? And the reason is because the media is controlled. The information is out there. You can go to our website. Go to WilliamHKennedy.com. You'll find it really is very true. And this permeates every aspect of our society. And behind that, of course, is the people who really run America. And it's not simply half a dozen organizations or a dozen of satanic, dozens of satanic organizations. Let me suggest my talk on Agenda 21, the covert plan. What is Agenda 21? It's the master plan for America for the 21st century. How do we know what it is? Well, they simply describe it in their books and in government publications. But certainly you want to get my DVD and you want to get then the syllabus that goes with that. It has much of their writings, not what I say, what they say about what their plan is. They're very open, but they figure the American people, so uh, swept up in bread and circuses and in entertainment and the wonderful life, we're living a utopian life. Of course, it's all done on borrowed money. The government has to borrow 40 cents out of every dollar that, uh, uh, that they spend a day just to maintain utopia. And sooner or later, the whole thing's going to collapse, and that's what they want. They want to destroy America because America is a Christian nation. Go to the Trilateral Commission website and look at their logo. See the three sixes joined together by an upside-down broken cross, and you will find, if you study the occult, that is an ancient occult emblem. And why is it in the Trilateral Commission website? Well, it's the logo. And, of course, who formed the Trilateral Commission? A man named David Rockefeller. We have his memoirs. You can get them from my ministry by calling one 800 544 927 1-800-544-8927. And there on page 405, David Rockefeller lays it all out. He says, you know, they say that uh, my that uh, my family and I are, are um, part of a secret cabal conspiring against the best interests of the United States and that my family and I are, are, are certainly part of an international group working against the to establish a more integrated global economic and political structure, internationalists. And if that's the charge, I am guilty, and I'm proud of it. That's on page 405. And then he tells about how certainly the people who criticize him, or it's, well, it's all that's wonderful to criticize, but how would we, how would the common people have raised living standards throughout the world? And yes, ladies and gentlemen, they have raised living standards out the world. But it's the cost of America. That's why uh, they set 12 million American jobs and manufacturers overseas. And those jobs are not coming back and more are going to be leaving here as they gradually grind down the living standards of America and destroy the middle class. And that's what it's really all about. You better get informed. You better begin making preparations to protect yourself and your family. Our number 1-800-544-8927. Our webpage, RadioLiberty.com. 1-800-544-8927. Please pray for Radio Liberty, for our provision and our protection. Be grateful for a 